Hello, my name's Redcoat Viking, and welcome to my complete beginner's guide for Hell Let Loose in Update 12. The goal of this video is to teach you everything you need to know as a new player, and we'll be covering everything from basic controls and role selection, to game mechanics, and some tips to help you survive longer in a firefight. I've divided the video up into chapters, so feel free to skip to a specific chapter if you're looking for one particular topic, but if you're brand new to the game then I'd highly recommend watching the whole thing, as it's full of little tips that might not be immediately obvious to you in-game. So with all that said, go grab yourself a coffee and we'll get started at the very top. Before you can spawn in, you first need to join a squad. To do this, just locate the list of available squads on the left side of the screen and press join. If a match has just started, it might take a minute or two for people to start creating squads. If you decide to create your own squad, you'll automatically become the squad leader, which is not recommended for new players without a microphone or a basic understanding of the game's mechanics, so if you're not sure you want to take on the extra responsibility, it's best to just wait. Once you join a squad, you'll be taken to the role selection screen. Some roles require more teamwork than others, but ultimately there's no right or wrong answer here, so choose whichever role feels right to you. Just remember which role you picked, and keep an ear open for your squad leader asking for you in case you're needed for a special task, such as placing down supplies or building resource nodes for the commander. If at any time you're not sure what needs to be done, it's best to just ask. Hell Let Loose has a very friendly and helpful community that's usually always willing to step up and help new players who ask for advice. The worst thing you can do is pick a role that's vital to the team's success and then go into radio silence, but we'll explore roles in more detail later in the video. Finally, once you've selected your role, you need to choose a spawn point using the map, and then press Deploy. The controls in Hell Let Loose are similar to most other shooters, so they should feel fairly familiar if you've played similar games before. You walk forward with W, backwards with S, strafe left with A, and strafe right with D. Left control makes you crouch, and space makes you jump and vault over fences and other obstacles. Q lets you lean left, and E lets you lean right, which is really useful for peeking around corners without exposing your whole body. There's no crosshair, so you'll need to bring up your weapon sights to aim by holding right click, then left click to fire. If you're using a bolt action rifle like the German K98K, then by default it'll bolt back automatically and be ready to fire again on its own, but you can enable manual bolting in the options if you want a more immersive experience. With manual bolting enabled, left click a second time after firing a shot to bolt the next round into the chamber. You can also hip fire most weapons, but it's much less accurate than aiming down the sights, so don't rely on it for long range shooting. If you find yourself in a real pickle, you can tap the B key to pull out your knife and perform a quick melee strike. And if all that action went and got you injured, press F to equip a bandage, and then hold F to heal yourself or a friendly player. Use the scroll wheel on the mouse or numbers 1 through 9 on the keyboard to cycle through your available equipment and weapons. The M key can be used to bring up the map, which is a vital tool that you'll be using frequently in every match. Finally, you can press the middle mouse button to place a temporary marker on the map called a ping in the direction that you're looking. Pinging can be very handy for quickly pointing out enemy positions, but only your squad mates can see them, so we'll explore other ways of calling out targets to the rest of the team later in the video. Vehicles and artillery are also slightly more complicated, so we'll cover them later in the video as well, and we'll also go over some tips to help you survive more than a few seconds without getting your head blown off. You can customise all the controls by hitting escape and going to key bindings. Before we get into the nitty gritty stuff, I strongly recommend changing a couple of settings to make life easier for yourself and put you on the same level as everyone else. Start by tapping escape and going to options and then gameplay. Look for dead body despawn delay and reduce it to the lowest possible setting, which is 30 seconds or 0.5. This helps with performance because there's less bodies laying around that need to be rendered, but also because setting it to anything higher puts you at a significant disadvantage compared to other players with it on the lowest setting. Basically, with this setting any higher than the minimum, you would be seeing corpses on the ground that other people wouldn't, potentially obscuring a target for you, but not for your opponent. Once you've done that, scroll down a little further until you see nameplates, and turn the sliders for team, unit and vehicle up to the maximum, which is 500 meters. This lets you see friendly tags above players' heads much further away, which helps distinguish friend from foe to prevent friendly fire. If you think the hood feels a little cluttered, try turning down the player nameplate opacity to about 20%, and turn on Use Nameplate Occlusion to make it only show friendly tags within your field of view, and not those obscured by buildings, walls or hills. 
but short. Up 200, left 1-5, over. A good team is a team that communicates well together, and the best way to do that is by using a microphone to quickly relay intel and instructions along the chain of command. There are three different voice channels and two text channels that you need to know. The V, C and X keys allow you to talk using your voice, and the K and L keys are for text. Hold V while talking to speak locally to any friendlies within about 50 metres of you, use the C key to talk directly to your squad from anywhere on the map, and use the X key to talk in the command chat, but only if you're playing as a squad leader or in the commander role. Finally, tap K to type a message to the whole team, and L to type a message to your squad. Stay down. Got contacts bearing 134 directly ahead. 134. Okay, on three, make a run for this trench line on my ping, okay? One, two, three. Good communication is often what makes the difference between victory and defeat. Work with nearby teammates to pinpoint enemy positions using pings, compass bearings, landmarks and markers, but remember that all markers are placed by players, so they may not always be 100% accurate. Contact enemy infantry bearing 322 in the open. Multiple contacts on my ping northwest. Possible enemy garrison on my ping behind the hay bale. Can you mark it please, squad lead? Only squad leaders and the commander are able to place markers on the map. To place a marker, just open the map and right click, or hold down the middle mouse button and select a marker from the tool wheel to place it in the direction that you're looking. They're useful for marking enemy tanks or spawn points once their location is fairly accurate based on intel from people nearby. The HUD in Hell Let Loose is fairly minimalistic, and you can enable or disable it by pressing the T key. The most important part of the HUD is the compass, located at the bottom centre. The compass shows the bearing of whichever direction you're currently looking, and works just like a real compass. It ranges from 0 to 360 degrees, with 0 degrees being dead north, 90 degrees is east, 180 degrees is south, and so on. Compass bearings are useful for calling out targets to other players nearby, but they're not as accurate over long distances, at least not compared to other, easier methods such as pings and markers. In the lower right corner you can see your current ammo supply, and just a quick reminder if you don't see it, you can press T to activate the hood. The ammo count shows how many magazines you have left, but not how many individual rounds are left in the existing clip, so you'll need to keep track of that yourself, or just reload using the R key each time you're out of danger. In the bottom left corner you can see details about the commander and other members of your squad, including what role they're playing, signified by the small symbol to the left of their name. The current sector status is shown in the centre at the top of the screen, and that's also where you can see if your team is winning or losing the current sector. Finally, in the upper left corner you'll find the chat and commander call-in messages. There's two different game modes in Hell Let Loose, Warfare and Defensive. In both game modes, the capture points, also known as strong points, are randomly selected at the start of the match, so that each map feels different each time you play it. In Warfare mode, the map is divided into five sectors, and the goal is to capture all five sectors on the map. Should you fail to capture all five sectors before the map ends, then the team that controls the middle sector is declared the winner. A sector is always two rows high and six columns wide, and each sector contains one strong point, indicated by the black circle on the map. In Warfare mode, the capture zone includes the four grid squares around the strong point, meaning any player stood anywhere within the four grid squares will contribute to the team's capture strength in that sector. Any player standing within the strong point itself receives a significant bonus to their capture strength, and the team with the most capture strength begins to capture or defend that sector. In Warfare, a match can last up to one and a half hours. In the offensive game mode, one team defends while the other team attacks, and once a sector is captured, the defending team cannot recapture it, and must fall back to defend the next sector. Offensive matches last 30 minutes by default, but each time the attacking team captures a point, it extends the match by another 30 minutes until all points have been captured, or the defending team manages to hold out until the timer runs out. Also, unlike in Warfare mode, sectors in offensive matches can only be captured by being inside the strong point itself, and to win the round, the attacking team must capture all sectors before the timer runs out. If the defending team have any sectors remaining at the end of the match, then they are declared the winner. It takes two minutes to capture a sector. 
Each time a sector is captured in either game mode, any garrisons and outposts belonging to the losing team are automatically removed. Generally speaking, the team with the most garrisons and best communications will win in either game mode. With that in mind, consider searching for enemy spawn points that may be reinforcing their position, and avoid focusing too heavily on trying to get inside the strong point until you've cleared out the surrounding area. Unlike other shooters, winning a match of Hell Let Loose involves having overall control of the map, rather than just trying to rush directly into the capture point. By eliminating the enemy's spawn points in the area, they will be unable to reinforce the strong point as easily, making it much easier to capture. Lastly, a really good practice is to always keep an eye on the map, and if you notice your team losing the previous sector, never hesitate to fall back and secure the area before resuming your attack. Focusing too heavily on attacking and having no one on defence is the most common reason that a team loses a match. All spawn points beyond the three main HQ spawns are created by the players. There's four different types of spawn points. Outposts, garrisons, airheads and half-tracks. Outposts and garrisons can only be placed by squad leaders and the commander. An outpost costs nothing to build, but only allows the squad that placed it to spawn on it. Garrisons cost 50 supplies to build in blue zones and 100 supplies to build in red zones, and they allow the whole team to spawn on them, making them crucial to a team's effectiveness on the battlefield. Generally speaking, the team that builds the most garrisons throughout a match is usually the team that wins, and you should never rely on just one or two garrisons as they can be easily destroyed. To build an outpost or garrison, just select the watch tool while playing in the squad leader role, hold right click and wait for the blueprint to turn green, and then hold left click to build it. Garrisons need to be spaced at least 200 metres apart from each other. Thankfully, 200 metres is the exact width and height of a grid square on the map, making it easy to see where you can build another garrison. Each squad can only have one outpost deployed at a time, and each team is limited to a maximum number of 8 garrisons. Airheads are another type of spawn that can be called in by the commander using a special ability that drops an airborne garrison up to two grid squares into enemy territory. Once deployed, an airhead acts the same as a garrison, but only for a limited time before it disappears, making them an excellent way to briefly redirect an enemy defence by attacking from a totally different angle if the current attack is stalled. Half-tracks can also be used as a garrison spawn and can be driven by anyone. To spawn on a half-track, it first needs to be deployed, which you can do by simply switching off the engine. A spawn point lights up with a little red symbol on the map when an enemy is within 50 metres of it. Once an enemy gets within 15 metres of one of your team's garrisons, it becomes locked, preventing you or anyone else from spawning there until the enemy player is killed, hopefully before they have time to destroy the garrison. If the garrison is located in the red zone, the range at which it gets locked increases to 100 metres, so avoid placing them too close to enemy positions. Lastly, all spawn points make faction specific radio sounds to help make them easier for the enemy team to find and destroy. For example, if you're playing as the Americans and you hear some German radio chatter, it means there's an enemy spawn point close to your position, and you should prioritise finding and destroying it. Be careful though, spawn points are often hives of enemy activity, so consider your approach carefully and work with your squad to take it down as quickly and effectively as possible. You can destroy enemy outposts by simply running close to them, but to destroy a garrison or an airhead, you need to get up close to it and hold F until it's destroyed. As for half-tracks, you're going to need a bazooka or a satchel to blow it up. Whether you're attacking or defending, destroying enemy spawn points should always be your top priority, because if they can't spawn in, they can't cause trouble. There are four different resources in the game. Supplies, manpower, munitions and fuel. Supplies can be dropped by the support class, by an airdrop or from the back of a supply truck, and they're used to build engineer defensive structures such as bunkers and barbed wire, as well as garrisons for your team to spawn at, and resource nodes that generate vital resources for your team. Manpower, munitions and fuel are team-wide resources that are passively generated every 60 seconds, and they're used by the commander to call in special abilities such as bombing runs, supply drops, airheads and spawn new tanks. Every shot fired by artillery also costs munitions, so having a shortage of resources caused by a lack of resource nodes can severely hamper a team's ability to fight back effectively. The Engineer class can use supplies to build one of each resource nodes, which increases the amount of resources generated each cycle, and the team can have a maximum of 9 nodes at any one time, usually divided equally into 3 nodes of each type, also called a full set. 
You can build them anywhere on the map, including at your team's HQ, and up to update 12, they generate the same amount of resources wherever they're placed. Just as with spawn points, enemy players can destroy your team's resource nodes and supply crates by walking up to them and holding F, or by using a satchel charge to blow them up. They cannot be destroyed by grenades or anti-tank weapons. Resources are vital to a team's ability to buy heavy tanks, fire artillery and call in air support, so it's crucial that your team has three full sets of nodes from the start to the end of every match, and if you notice that you don't have three full sets, consider switching to the engineer class, jumping into a supply truck and putting some up. All weapons in Hell Let Loose can kill you with one shot to the head, and bolt action and semi-automatic weapons like the Mosin Nagant and the USM1 Garand don't have any trouble one-shotting you to the chest from 200 meters away. Friendly fire is also always enabled with 50% reduced damage, so it pays to be careful with those grenades. When firing a gun, you need to get used to dealing with weapon recoil and bullet drop. Drag down gently on your mouse to counter the upwards pull of the recoil on fully automatic weapons, and aim slightly above the target when taking a shot over long distances to compensate for the bullet drop. Death is all part of the experience in Hell Let Loose, but spotting enemies and figuring out where you're getting shot from can be quite difficult, because of the amount of cover available on each map, and the long distances that players can engage over. The best way to increase your survivability is to imagine that you're actually there, and avoid doing anything too reckless. A moving target is very easy to spot, but a stationary target with good cover behind them is much more difficult. There's a few tips you can use when navigating the map to avoid being killed so often. Firstly, always know where you're going and why, and decide if it's actually worth going there in the first place. And when you do decide to move, always move from cover to cover to get there safely. Sprint in short distances from one cover to another, and then take stock of your surroundings, checking for potential danger before repeating the process and moving to the next cover. A short burst of movement followed by a few seconds to listen for enemies close by will massively increase your chance of survival. When moving in areas with little to no cover, avoid creating a silhouette that'll make you easy to spot. A good example of this would be not to run along the top of a hill where your body will be visible to the whole map with just the sky in the background, making you a very easy target. Instead, try moving along the side of the hill so you're more difficult to see against the terrain of the hill itself. Lastly, don't underestimate the power of suppression. You don't always have to see your target to be able to pin them down. When you shoot near an enemy, their screen gets blurred and shakes around to simulate the effects of being shot at. Basically, it makes it hard for them to see for a few seconds, so if all else fails, spray the area where you think the enemy is and use the time that they're suppressed to change position. There's no one method that's going to keep you alive forever. Death is pretty inevitable in Hell Let Loose, but these simple tricks will help keep you alive for longer and lead to more engaging gameplay. Basically, just always assume you're in someone's sights and make yourself as difficult a target as possible. There's a variety of different vehicles in Hell Let Loose, including everything from tanks and armoured cars to supply trucks and half-tracks. Hold F to enter a vehicle when standing next to it, and use F1 through F9 keys to switch seats. Trucks and recon vehicles use automatic transmissions, so you just need to turn on the engine with the E key, and then use W, A, S and D to move around. When driving a supply truck, hold right-click to drop a supply crate containing 150 supplies out the back of the vehicle. Each supply truck has two crates, totaling 300 supplies, and they can be restocked by driving back to the logistics area at one of the HQs. Tanks have room for a three-man crew, and to be most effective, they should be used with a full crew, with a commander in the command seat directing the driver and gunner. To drive a tank, just start the engine with E, apply some throttle, and then use left shift to shift up a gear, and left control to shift down. Each time you shift up a gear, it's important to let the revs max out before shifting again, otherwise it feels sluggish and struggles to build up speed. As a gunner, you can traverse the turret using W, A, S and D, fire the main gun with left click, the machine gun with right click, select the ammo by scrolling with the middle mouse wheel, and reload with the R key. If you want to switch ammo types but there's already a round loaded, you need to first fire off the existing round before being able to switch to a different type of ammo. You can see the name of the ammo in the lower right corner when you're sitting in the gunner position, with AP standing for armour piercing, which is good against tanks, and HE standing for high explosive, which is better against infantry and lightly armoured targets. 
If and when your tank gets killed in combat and there's no more available at the team's HQ, it's time for the tank commander to ask the commander for a new tank using the X key. It's also best to ask which tank you want and where you want it. So to make it as easy as possible, try saying something like, Commander, can we get a medium tank at mid HQ please? And they normally sort it out fairly quickly. It's also worth noting that some of the tank crew loadouts include a repair tool, which can repair a vehicle back to full health by jumping out, selecting the tool and aiming it at the tank while holding the left mouse button. Engineers can also build a repair station, which is also effective at repairing tanks. There's a lot more involved in operating a tank and working together effectively as a crew, but that would go beyond the scope of this beginner's guide, so we'll cover the different strategies and best practices in a future video. On most maps, each team has three large artillery guns located at the centre HQ, with a range that covers almost the entire map. Each artillery round has a massive explosion radius and can be devastating to the enemy team when they're on target, or a menace to your own team if they fall short. Each shot from artillery also costs munitions, one of the resources generated by resource nodes that we covered earlier in the video, so it's important to make sure that your team has three munition nodes before jumping on an artillery gun, and if not, it's your responsibility to switch to engineer, grab a supply truck and go and build one. Using artillery takes a bit of practice to get right, and can be quite complicated until you understand the basics. I'll give a very brief description here, but for a much more detailed demonstration that teaches you everything you need to know step by step, I'd recommend watching my dedicated artillery tutorial as well, linked above. So, artillery guns have two seats, the operator and the loader, and you need to switch between both seats when operating a gun. Firstly, I recommend using artillery as a squad leader in your own squad, so you can communicate with the command chat and place your own markers on the map, which will make your life much easier. Then you need a target, so open up your map and look for a viable target, preferably where someone has placed an artillery barrage marker and where there's no friendlies nearby. If there's no good looking markers on the map, or if you're on an empty server and just want to practice aiming, right click on the map and place your own marker. Once you have a marker, hover over it and take note of the range, then close the map. Next, press the T key to bring up the markers on your hood and use A and D to rotate the gun to line up directly with your newly placed marker. If you can't traverse the gun enough from the operator seat, switch to the loader seat by holding F2 and rotate the gun further. Once you've lined up the gun with your target, it's time to look at the numbers to the left of the gun sight. Using W to increase the elevation and S to decrease it, try to match the range of your marker as closely as possible to the range on the gun using the mill measurement scale. For example, if you're aiming at a target exactly 1000 meters away, your elevation setting in the lower right corner should be 764 mil, as shown by the range scale on the left. Once you've got your range sorted, hold F2 to switch into the loader seat and load a HE round, then switch back to the operator position by holding F1 and left click to fire a round. If your target hits an enemy, you get an audible cue to let you know. If you kill a friendly, you'll get a warning on your screen, and normally an angry comment in chat to let you know. But ultimately, the only way to know if your shots are on target is to get confirmation from someone on the ground near the splash zone, so it's important to be in constant communication with other squad leaders using command chat to make sure they're getting what they need. Now it's time to take a closer look at the different classes you can play as and how each one contributes to the team. Squads are divided into three groups, infantry, tank crews and recon squads, with the commander in its own squad at the very top. Infantry squads consist of a squad leader and up to five squad members playing as a variety of different classes, each one unique and invaluable to the team in its own way, though some are more in demand than others. Tank crews are made up of a tank commander and two crewmen, and recon squads include a spotter and a sniper, with a maximum of two recon squads per team. Each class has its own unique abilities and important role to play within the team, and most classes have multiple loadouts you can unlock by simply playing as that class to level it up. Now let's take a look at what each class does in a bit more detail. Squad leaders lead squads, build garrisons and outposts, and try to keep the squad generally together and on mission. A rifleman is a basic soldier that can drop ammo for other players. Assault and automatic riflemen are good for providing support and advancing on enemy positions. The medic is the only class that can revive other players, and they can also heal players faster and have a larger supply of bandages. A player that's been shot in the head though cannot be revived. 
The support role can place supplies to help the squad leader and engineers build vital structures such as garrisons and resource nodes. Their supplies refresh automatically every few minutes. The machine gunner is excellent at providing a solid base of fire and suppressing enemy positions with a bonus to suppression damage, but it also tends to attract enemy snipers. Anti-tank is useful for killing tanks, but only if you get behind them due to their very limited supply of ammo. Engineers are the only class that can build blueprints for resource nodes and defensive structures, though once the blueprint is placed, any class with a hammer in their loadout can help build them. The spotter is the name of the squad leader of a recon squad, and can place outposts deep within enemy territory. Recon squads should work closely together behind enemy lines to find, harass and destroy enemy garrisons, and disable their artillery. The spotter also gets a flare gun with a single shot to highlight enemy positions for the whole team on the map, similar to a recon plane. The sniper role speaks for itself, and even though each team can only have two of them, a properly coordinated recon squad can be absolutely devastating for the enemy team. At the end of every match, each player can give a 10% experience bonus called a commendation to one person on their team, which is a nice way to show them that you appreciate their effort during the match. It can be a squad leader, the commander, or even a level 1 player in their very first match. To give a commendation, just click the little symbol to the left of a player's name once the match ends. Also, if you enjoyed playing with someone during a match, you can also add them on Steam directly from the scoreboard by holding tab and pressing the invite friend button. And that completes this tutorial on the Hell Let Loose basics. There's loads more in-depth stuff to learn about the game, but my hope is that everything we've covered will help you feel confident taking your first few steps in the game, while being able to understand relatively well what you need to do and what the team needs most at any given time. Like I said though, if you're ever in doubt, there's no shame in asking in chat, as most people in the community are really friendly and they're more than happy to help you out. But for now, I hope you found this guide helpful, and if you did, then consider checking out some of my other Hell Let Loose videos, and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. Until the next time, as always, thank you for watching, have fun, and stay wholesome.